right, well, we got Dan on the line. And I started thinking, I probably shouldn't have shared those pictures. But. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, guys, we got Don Higgins on. Um, anything that's got to do with uh, chasing big deer, I've got my hands in it somehow. So. Well, my name's John Eberhardt. The first one that comes to mind was early in my career. I'm Scott Buckley from Iowa. Um, I had jumped him in the summer, too. He jumped up in that swamp grass down in the bottom lake. And, uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm chasing it. There ain't nothing stopping me. Justin Hollinsworth. I'm with Whitetail Addictions and uh, Lone Wolf Custom Gear. So what are we talking about tonight? We're uh, we're talking about the one that got away. They talked about a deer that you didn't get it done on for some reason. Um, So uh, go ahead and get into the story of the one that got away. All right, guys, we got a special guest on the line. We got Scott Buckley. How are you doing tonight, Scott? Good. How's it going, fellas? Doing awesome talking to you, man. Uh, We we (laughs) had a nice conversation uh, like a week ago or you know, five days ago or so about whitetail. It was nice to chit chat with you and I've been excited to, to pick your brain on this topic. Yep. Great. Yep. I'm Scott Buckley from Iowa. Um, originally come from Michigan 12 years ago and, um, decided to take up Iowa as my home residence and love it here ever since I came out. So, um, yep. So what are we talking about tonight? We're uh, we're talking about the one that got away. We kind of we kind of broke down this series for you, trying to talk to the guys out there that are just stone cold killers, and, and that's that's you, man. You're always getting it done, no matter where you go. You're hunting public, and uh, your kids. You know, you're teaching your kids how to get it done. So I'm really excited to talk to you. And you shared some pictures with us, and an absolute just astonishing drop time buck so just kind of go and go into the story of the the drop time buck okay this is um i think it was in uh spring of 2016 um at the time i was hunting a lot of public land in iowa and i still do even though since then it was 2015 i bought um good piece of property out here in iowa too but I still um, hunt a lot of my same public land pieces. Um, you know, if I don't have the buck I'm after on my farm, I, I take off to all my public pieces. And um, this was 2016. I We were um, shed hunting. Me and my boy, we never shed hunted this spot. Um, it was kind of by a main road, and there was a campground kind of next to it. And I thought, well, it looks like good bedding, winter bedding in there. Um, had a lot of cedars and grassy areas and I thought, let's just give it a wing and, you know, see if we find anything in here. <laughs> and I drove by it a million times, never hunted there. Or, and, um, we went in there right off the bat. I found a giant, um, shed. I think he had five on one side, including a 10 and a half inch drop time. And, um, one of the bigger sheds I've probably ever found. I said, wow, I, took I think I was by myself. I took it back. Yeah, because my boy, yeah, I was by myself that day. So I took it back, showed him, and um, we both went out the next day looking for the other side. And probably an hour or two later, we found the other side. I would say 300 yards from the other one. And that one had just a, just as big of a rock. Instead of like a drop tine, his main beam dropped way down. And, um, I took him to the Iowa Deer Classic. He scored, um, I think it was about 161, somewhere in there, if I'm not mistaken. So I figured, you know, he was well over 170 buck at the time. And actually he took, I think it was second place in the shed division that year for non typical. And, um, so immediately, yeah, we were on a mission to find out more about this deer. <laughs> so um, I was pretty geeked. Yeah, immediately that, I don't know if it was probably May, June, um, started setting out cameras in that area. I found a shed. Just hoping, you know, to, to find them and, and, you know, see if I could figure them out and i think almost immediately i i i would assume by june or july i started getting pictures a lot of pictures and his frame had shrunk a little bit from the day from the year before 
but he got a lot more junk. He still had the, the drop tie and the drop beam. He had um, flyers off the back. I think they were five, six inches long. On each side, he had flyers. I don't remember his total points, but he had a lot of them. I was getting pictures and video and on a consistent basis through July, August. Um, one day in checking cameras, um, I jumped him out of his bed and he was probably, he was within sight of this campground that was full of people. It was a summer season. He was sitting within probably 80 yards bedded in this spot. And I know he could just watch the campers. I mean, that tells you, you know, kind of some bucks, you know, they're, you know, they say you, you got to go deep for bucks, but this buck lived right by human, pre, you know, human presence. And, and, um, you know, he just not, a, not, nobody knew he was there except me. And, um, so yeah, I continued to get pictures and that told me he was bedding in the same spot all summer. He'd come from there. And so I was kind of all set up, had spots marked on, um, my Onyx maps for, um, hanging hunts, um, you know, come October 1st. And, um, I think I started, I went in there right away, October 1st and started haunting them and, I never did see him in the early season. Every time I'd pull a camera, he was at this spot where I was going to set a blind. He just kept eluding me for the first couple of weeks of October. I probably went in there three, four times, five times after him in a couple of weeks. And, and the time I had, and I didn't want to burn it out. And I think it got to about the middle of October. And a um, friend of mine, Aaron Warbritton from the hunting public, um, I'd shared pictures with him earlier that summer of the, of that buck. And, um, he called me up and he said, Scott, I think we've seen that buck last night. Me and me and his film guy, he was with Midwest Whitetail then they were doing an observation set and they seen it coming out of a bedding area on the other side of the slough from where I was hunting them. And, um, <clears throat> he wondered if he could sit in there the next night and I said well hey I got an early muzzleloader tag and I've been hunting them why don't we just go in there and hunt them together the next night and he said sure and um so he came in from the east they kayaked in and um kind of got set up where he came out the night before out of this bedding area and I cut across the slough I came in from the north and kind of came in on the on this ridge. Kind of me and Aaron was in between them on each side of where he came out the night before. And, um, yeah, he never came out. So <laughs> we heard a lot of shooting up and shooting up in there in the public land up above him, I think, on the opposite road. And I don't know if he just got a little spooked. Aaron had some snorting in by him and, um, don't know what happened but yeah he never came out so um i proceeded to hunt kind of in november my cameras just kind of went dead on them in that spot early october where i had pictures of them they went dead in there and i picked up a couple night pictures across the slough where, where aaron had seen them um kind of by one of my stand locations so i Hunted in there a couple times, um, passed up a couple no other nice bucks, but didn't see him. Uh, there was another huge um, ten point in there. I think he had two splits. I figured him easily one seventy plus. So I had a lot of pictures of that one too. I figured, you know, if he if the drop tine one didn't come by me, I would sure take that one out. But I had jumped him in the summer, too. He jumped up in that swamp grass down in the bottom, like, 20 yards from me one day. I was out checking cameras, and he was a heck of a buck. But So, yeah, I kind of hunted him a couple times there in November, no luck. And, and then I just kind of gave up on him, and, and um, I think I... I think I was hunting my property a little bit. My property was new that year, first wall hunting it. And um, 
just kind of gave up on him and because um, gun seasons were coming on and and I didn't I used my early muzzleloader tag at the time I you were allowed one gun tag for statewide tag in Iowa um, and I but since then I have a landowner's tag too so I can actually get two gun tags but so yeah it um, let me see so yeah I kind of season season went on and um the end of January, it was after after late season. Our season closes January 10th. Um, I think it was the following day or two, or that following weekend after all the season shut down, I got a bag of corn, and I went back in there to put it out to see if I could pick up, see if he made it through the seasons. And, well, as I'm taking that bag of corn out, I seen something out in that slough just kind of out in the grass, maybe 200 yards out. It just, it just didn't look right out there. And um, just something was out of place. I kind of re- remind me of seeing a like a, a skeleton with a rack or something out there because it wasn't moving. It was just watch kind of as I walked by, it just stayed right there. So I put that bag of corn down and my backpack with cameras in, and, and I decided, well, let's go out there and see if it's a dead deer out there. I didn't make it out there 50 yards and up blew that buck. It was the buck I, it was a drop time buck that I'd been after. He was laying down out there in a the slough. I kind of see his rack out there in the grass and I'd say it was him. And, you know, it was just a, I think it was a day or two after season and, um, he'd survived. And, um, so yeah, I proceeded, went back, put some corn out, put cameras on it and, Checked him the following weekend, and there he was. He was he was all over my cameras, and um, proceeded uh, every weekend. I'd put out a little bit more corn, and I actually I had him, and I had that big ten point coming in with the splits, and they but they both survived. And um, I I was kind of gonna check cards every weekend because the year before I think I found his sheds in February, so they say. Usually they'll drop pretty close to the same time every year unless, you know, an injury or, um, you know, it's a really hard winter. They might lose them early. But so I was keeping a close eye on them come February. If he dropped, I was going to immediately start looking for his sheds Um, because I knew one other guy. I think I'd seen stands in there might have been after him. So I thought, well, as soon as I, you know, if a, he was coming in every day almost, as soon as I see a buck with sheds, I'm going in look for sheds. Well, here it come. It was within, I think, three, four days of the year before the date I found him. I went in that following weekend, and there's a buck with no horns. And um, so I called my buddy, Steve Noble, and um, I said, hey, this buck lost his horns. Um, if you got time, let's go out and just start grid search in this area see if we can find them and he said uh, i think he said yeah but it'd be two three hours or something like that well so i started looking i wasn't an hour into the look here goes another little twist in this story and um i heard a four-wheeler quad back in the public area and you're not allowed quads back in this area and um I could tell he was, he passed by me pretty close in the brush. I could tell he was looking for horns just the way he was moving through there. And, um, so I immediately got on the phone with a conservation officer and I said, Hey, there's a guy in here on a quad, <coughs> um, you know, running through the public land, I assume shed hunting. And he said, okay, I'm at so-and-so I should be there in 10, 15 minutes. <coughs> and, um, so I'm kind of just hanging out, you know, listening to this guy work the area, and and um, and all of a sudden I see him, or I hear him kind of working his way towards the road, and I I, I called the, or I think I texted the or called the CEO, and then I he didn't answer. I I texted him, and he said I'm just a couple minutes away, and then I heard that quad go burning down the blacktop towards this little town. And I thought, oh, shit. So 
the finally the CEO answered, and he goes, I just pulled into the um, West parking lot, and I said, did you see him? He said, no, I came from the West. He just missed him, and they never caught the guy. <laughs> but And then afterwards, you know, during season, I found stands back there with corn on. The guy was, I assume, the same guy trying to, you know, he was that was illegal in Iowa. And, um so anyway, yeah, we shed out of that day, and my buddy Steve came. I think we shed out of five, six hours, and all of a sudden I found one of the sheds. And you talk about a happy camper, you know, find the, have that much history with them, and, and there's one of the sheds laying there. And and um, we proceeded to look for the other one. We went across a slough where we were Aaron had seen them and um, just searched that whole area. That was the only one we found. Uh, another little twist in the story about, oh, I think it was two springs later, um, Aaron or somebody sent me a text, and I later seen it on a hunting public video, that Ted, Ted was back in there, Ted and the cameraman, uh, Ted from the hunting public, he was back in there turkey hunting, and they seen something, this was across the slough, like right where Aaron seen him come out of this bedding area two falls before um they seen a horn sticking out of the creek the mud and they pulled it out and there's the other side to that rack that Jeez. you know the, the set uh you know the one that i had found it laid there in the mud for a year and a half almost two years but yeah so that was pretty cool so we went over ted's here just this last i think this last fall and we was checking it out but um so, yeah, I was kind of geeked about the next season. You know, he'd survived, and um, it started putting the cameras out like normal, you know, everywhere that I had them the year before. And um, I don't know, I set out six, eight cameras in that area, and um, nothing. I, I checked cameras through... Right, first of October, first week of October, um, not a single sighting of them. Um, don't know what happened. We had a little bit of EHD because we had a drought that summer, and it wasn't bad. But so I wondered if that got them. Um, maybe a car got them. I I don't know. Um, he just disappeared on us, and so I kind of was after two other big ones. Um, really big ones that fall, and I have ended up pulling my cameras, I think, the, by the second week of October. I pulled them and was concentrating on this other area, but, um, yeah, just out, disappeared. So that's kind of a, you know, basic story of the buck that got away, you know. He was, he was I thought I had him pinned to a T, knew everything about him, and, and um his summer bedding and you know we even october bedding across the slough and he just he slipped by me but um yeah it sounds like you I were guess, right on him man i mean they did you they, yeah they did have an encounter with him and two years of sheds and you're really that next summer you're like all right i got two years of history with this thing two yeah. <laughs> two years of sheds this is the year this i'm is, gonna this is go time this is the year i'm gonna put it all together and then for him just to vanish but that's devastating you going yeah, in there that cardboard I, I, you're just like all right where's he at where's he at where's he at <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly i thought i you know i ain't too often you know i knew exactly where he bedded everything and just totally disappeared I, I thought it you know the all the knowledge i got from the year before i thought this is going to be a cakewalk you know i um you know if i don't get him early season i knew where he had it in the, you know in the rut area and, and yeah he was one of the most unique bucks i've ever i've ever chased that's for sure he um yeah it, those... it just pretty those trail cam videos, yeah, you, those trail cam videos you sent in the sheds and stuff. I was like, man, this is insane. I, I, do, a buddy of mine killed one in Missouri that had a the main beam kind of just droop off. Remember you seeing that bend? Mm -hmm. But it was only like maybe four four inches. The main beam just kind of went straight down. That sucker went down forever. It looked <laughs> seemed like you know. And then he had that flyer that drop on the other time and the flyers and kickers and had a lot yeah. going on. 
and kind of like a cool, tighter frame. You know, it was tall, tight, yeah. with a lot of character. So that's the way it was. The, that that year, it was tighter. But the year before, when I found his sheds, he had a pretty good size, really big frame. I don't. I think he was a really old buck. Um, just by I don't know his body features. He just. You know, some pictures I had, he had a big old, you know, husky body, and and most of the time he looked pretty wore down. Um, I and just the way his rack was the year before, his frame was a lot bigger, and then it kind of shrunk down. So I think he was, uh, you know, on the verge of going downhill. Yeah, we got um, a buck like that every year. His body gets a little worse. He gets more like giraffe looking. Neck kind of gets skinnier and longer and legs get looking like they're getting longer because he's losing that mass and then his rack just keeps dwarfing yeah so crazy how imagine that thing in its prime you know <laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah i wish i would uh you know that year i found found the first ones i wish i hunt him that year he had a he had a hell of a frame that year but it's crazy that um, a deer can make it on public you know with all the gun seasons and everything and that guy you know you know using a four-wheeler and baiting during season and then he makes it for through a full year just blows me away that these deer can do that yeah let alone like seven years yeah you know yeah yep yeah that was another thing i think it was opening it was opening day or opening weekend whatever it was um the first day I hunted him, I'm sitting there saddled in. I'm pretty excited, you know. I'm right on the edge of his batting, and I thought, you know, please come this way tonight. <laughs> and um, shoot, I wasn't about hour and a half for dark. I hear a dog off in the distance, and getting closer and closer, <laughs> like a hound dog type bark, you know. And and um, not a few minutes later, here comes a dog trolling through the area, oh, barking man. away, and that just ruined my night. We don't have a huge dog problem in the area I live, but it happened that night. You know, your your first night in that stand in that setup, and and um, here comes a dog right at prime time. And <laughs> I hate that. we had that happen, but with a coyote last year. That was the oh, weirdest yeah. thing ever. We're getting prime time, beautiful night. We're sitting over a hot scrape. We're like, oh, yeah, this is this is it, late October. And this coyote comes in, and I don't know if he pegged it, us. It was making the weirdest what, noises. But it sounded like a beagle, like, barking. And I thought it was a beagle, but it was just, like, whining and whining. And it would go 50 yards, and it'd do this, like, squealing, whining thing. And we didn't see anything that night. It was mm-hmm. the weirdest thing ever. But we were like, for the longest time, we had uh, no idea what it was. And then a coyote popped out and continued to do it as it was, like, trotting by us i was like what is going on <laughs> so something yeah. something startled it or it seen uh i don't know what was going on but it was definitely weird but that definitely would ruin the night especially when you have all that intel you're like all right i'm going in for the kill the first person in yeah. here very few people know it's alive and did the guys you cut you showed them the picture and stuff but they did they ever think that that deer would be on the other side of that slough the hunting public guys over there hunting it or did they what? Did they ever think it would be over there? Was it a pretty big surprise that it was over there when they were hunting? Yeah, yeah, they they didn't have a clue. They seen my pictures, but I never told them where it was at. They were just doing a random scouting trip. You know, they just set up different places and do their observation sets. And um, yeah, they had no clue. And then they seen it come out, and and they were kind of reviewing the footage later on when they got home that evening and there it goes god that looks like the deer that scott sent us last year you know the shed or i think i sent, might have sent him pictures that summer too i probably did them ones i sent you yeah and he called me and i said he told me where he was at i said yep that's the buck <laughs> well props to them so, for calling you and, yeah. and you know saying hey we're yeah i know let's yeah do it aaron, aaron could have went Aaron could have went in, not even said anything, but that's why I've all, we've had a pretty good relationship and, um, you know, they could have just didn't say a word to me, you know, just went in after it, but he, he wanted to make sure, you know, that he brought it up to me and that's just the way they are. Most of them guys are, you know, just really great guys and I'm pretty good friends with, um, with most of them and, 
Nice. Yeah, that's, that's um, the best way to do it. I mean, a guy's got a buck pinned down. You want to hunt him too, but you could say, hey, man, you, you, is it cool if I slide on in there? <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah. That, that's kind of what I said. Yeah, I said, I'm in the middle of hunting. I'm like, because Aaron wanted to go in there. And I said, well, heck, I'm in the middle of hunting him. Why don't we tag team him? Because he told me the situation. He said, yeah, that worked great. <laughs> and then I think after that, I said, well, <clears throat> from where you've seen that box, I have stand setups, um, you know, to the west of that. I said, how about I stay to the west and you guys stay to the east, you know, if you come back in here. And I think at the time, Aaron said, well, we, we bounce around a lot, you know. He goes, you know, if we come back in, you know, we're not going to hunt this buck, but, you know, we might come back when the conditions are right. And I think they did go back there two or three times after, but um, they never seen him again. But I think they did. Um, I think they did see a nice buck that night, but it wasn't the one. They got they got set up in a um, kind of in a ditch. They didn't have the best setup. They were on the. They didn't want to set their stands up because it, it was a pretty still night, and um, it, and they were real close to the bedding area. So, um, I think he just said they kind of sat in a ditch, and I, and I think they seen a nice one, but it winded them or something. I don't know, but it wasn't the you know it wasn't the buck. Yeah, they're it's good at that ground buck. game, but man, it's that's a that's yeah. a different world when you're down there. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how I killed my buck last year on the ground. I um. So I was on one of my spots, and I was just getting pounded by pressure. I, I was after a – actually, I kind of made a dumb move last year. I had a picture of a 6x6, six six, one picture of him, kind of a far – my camera was up high in a tree, and he was down below, and her – wait, I don't think I pulled the camera until after I seen this deer. Anyways – yeah, I was going in deep to this one spot. I think it was um, maybe third week of October. Yeah, I think third week of October. And um, I had a six by six, and he had a split. I seen him working in. It's getting it's getting pretty, you know, losing light. And I seen him working in, and I'm trying to glass him. Um, to see if he was a shooter or not, it was early, you know, early in the season, and I, I just didn't want to make a mistake. And you know, I shot one smaller than what I, what I wanted before, you know, that happens. And so I, he's coming in. I'm trying to judge him, and he, I keep hitting the binoculars. He looks pretty good. He got about, I think, 25 yards in my shooting lane, and and then I'm just I'm fighting with myself. Do I shoot him or don't I shoot him? Do I shoot him or don't I shoot him and then um i let him walk through that opening and then i'm still watching him in the brush he's pretty you know 25 30 yards he's going a little bit further he goes under some oaks by then it's getting pretty dark out and and um as he walked through i'm thinking oh man he sure did look big and i pulled the camera that's when i pulled my camera um, not far from there, and I had a picture and a video of him. I said, man, did I screw up. <laughs> that deer was probably yeah, easy, you know, 160-some deer. It was a 6x6 six six with a split. Um, yeah, it's a, probably the biggest one I've ever passed, you know, that On the if edge I had mountain. a second chance, I would have took him. <laughs> so I went back in there. You know, the next weekend, and I was mainly hunting weekends, and, and, uh, or no, I think I went back in, the next night I couldn't go in, um, because of the wind, so I went back in the following night, wind switched, I didn't see him that night, and then, um, I think I went back in the following, and then I run into some other guys that were set up kind of right where that buck was coming through except where they were set up with a tree stand i mean you couldn't you were in the middle of their feet area you could not play the wind i was hunting the edge of it so i knew any buck in there you know he was gonna you know educate the deer really fast and and he kind of screwed it up in there and never 
you know, after that, I kind of pulled out of there. I did leave some cameras in there, and I picked them up two or three times in the rut. In fact, I think pretty late I had them in the rut. Like the end of November, he made it through all the bow seasons. and um, <clears throat> But I kind of pulled out of there and went to this other spot where I killed a double drop time buck. First year I moved to Iowa in 2009, I killed a double drop buck that scored 170 um, on public. In 2009, I went back in that area and just kind of walked back in. I hadn't been back in there in a few years. I, I, I posted my boy. He went in. He went in with me, kind of closer to the road, about a half a mile in. Then I did a big circle around, um, come up this ridge where I killed that drop time buck a few years ago, and kind of sat down in, in a cluster of trees. This is a morning hunt i think it was november hmm. i don't know it's fairly early this year eighth or ninth i think eighth or ninth um i think it was around there yeah and um i sat down and i would say an hour in the daylight i look up i hear something here comes this buck cruising through at a pretty good clip he came about 25 yards and and um i was on the ground and he um, pulled my bow back. He seen me, but it was too late. I zipped him good, and he I seen him run through the open timber and kind of he crashed about probably hundred and hundred yards away, and uh, it was pretty exciting. He was he was he's probably pushing hundred and sixty inch deer. Real, I didn't score him, but took him to my taxidermy. We haven't got him back yet, but real heavy mass. Um, I don't even remember. It's it was on my profile picture there for a while. It's like he five by seven frame, it maybe with a cut, some extra junk points or something. But nice. yeah, it was pretty cool. I was pretty stoked for just walking back in and sitting on the ground, you know? Yeah, it's badass. <laughs> you can just be like, well, I killed a giant back in here in the past. It's probably good. And go back in there and pick the right area to, to smack one. So hopefully one day I can yeah. get on that level. <laughs> definitely got a lot of <laughs> a lot of training to do a lot of mess ups to happen out there if i can get on that level but so i mean yeah um, it's been we, pretty pretty exciting out here i love it i i live for it you know it's we only hear good things exciting. about iowa no one's like man iowa <laughs> yeah terrible out here yeah. white tails are terrible <laughs> so yeah we normally ask yeah, you know, what pro- what would you could do different on that deer but i don't think there's really um, anything you could do different because you know, two guys yep. hunting them on the entrance and exit. and Probably the only thing I thought about it, you know, I gave up on that buck kind of November when gun seasons came around. And I was out of statewide gun tags, but, you know, you can still hunt with a bow here late season. And I was hunting my property quite a bit. It was brand new that year. And, and, I probably I usually pull my cameras going into gun season. Um, I used to more because I used to put them all at ground level. Now I hide them up in trees, so I leave them sometimes for gun seasons. But I pulled them all that year, and if I would have left them, or even now, you know, I'm start this year. I actually put a couple cheaper cell cameras out on public land. Um, but got pretty good. I got service with them, and they're the cheap ones. So you know, if they get stolen. But yeah, if I would have had to put a cell or even run cameras, and knew he was in there late season, because um, he kind of migrated back into his summer beddings. Or you know, after season, I put the corn out to see if I could pick him up, and he was right in that summer bedding area. And um, yeah. probably what I could have. If I would have done it different, kept put cameras back out in late season because our late season lasts like three weeks. I mean, I was surprised how quick I picked them up after day after season, and I immediately started getting pictures of them. You know, I could have possibly, you know, hunted them late season with my bow, and you know, he would have been back into probably a more of a normal pattern. Um, it's hard when they probably ghost you worry. Like that. Yeah, probably, you know, late muzzleload season probably wouldn't have been too much pressure where he was at. Now, gun season is for Darren public, but, you know, he outsmarted all them people, and he probably 
that's probably the only thing I would did different was you know, but I was excited to try my own property that yeah, year. Yeah, you know, that, that'd be hard and, to pass, especially you know. if you had bucks out there and it's your own property your first year, and you're like, man, I just want to, yeah, kind of try it out here. Yeah, so I, yeah, I think I had my landowner's tag. That's what I was using on my own place was my landowner's tag, which I had for late season because I took the early season muzzle loader. Um, well, that year for my statewide tag but well while you're hunting this deer is there any anything that you used kind of as a tactic even with a trail cam or hunting him that you've used on other deer um since then that that's kind of connected dots be like oh yeah that buck did this um i guess i kind of do the same thing i just like i've been starting to put out some trail cams the last couple of weeks on on public lands, I mean, your own property is all kind of different. You got your set places, but <laughs> when I'm in um, public land, I <clears throat> um, just start hitting um, well-used trails, kind of try to get down. Um, like, it's pretty hilly a lot of the areas I hunt, so normally they're not up in the hills too much. They're more down in these river bottoms and creek bottoms where, where it's cooler. They'll bed right right along these um um you know grass areas a bunch of will, small willows growing out there they'll bat in them and and i try to you know get my cameras down in some of them areas um mineral is you can put mineral out in iowa you just can't hunt anywhere near it nowhere around it and, you know i i used to do that more um i don't do that as much anymore um just <laughs> stuff's heavy to carry out and a pain in the butt, but yeah, um, I, it's more natural. I try to get in these bedding areas with heavy trails, and um, you know, this time of year, the DNR does plant quite a bit of food plots on um, um, Iowa here and the public lands. They're they're they do a dang good job, at least in my area, they do. <laughs> so you know if you got a food source especially beans um i try i try to get back like the other day i set up on a, on a bean field on public um but i've seen signs of you know i've seen an old mineral lick from the year or two before on the edge and i thought well you know if anybody's out i don't want to get cameras stolen i'm going to go back in so i went to file these tra main trails coming into this bean field back in Oh, probably 300 yards where a bunch of trails intersected and I put cameras there just because you know I didn't want people finding my cameras up by the edge so yeah still good um, still good what's but, using that field but kind of get a little more seclusion on yeah stuff. Uh, I, I know this spot I'm talking about a friend of mine called me well actually it's where I killed my buck last year the reason I kind of went there a good friend of mine called I think he texted me and he said, um, um, he goes, there's a, I seen 180 inch typical, um, this summer, <laughs> typical 10, 180. And he knows his deer. I mean, he's, he'd probably be right on the money and, um, in this area. And, um, he said, I told so-and-so about it, but he didn't want to go down there and haunt it. And so I thought I'd tell you, I said, hell yeah, I'll go in there. And that's when I went in there you know about a week or so later and i shot that other one but um so that's kind of one reason i set that up pretty good in fact i was just in there last weekend and set up a few cameras and to see if this buck survived i didn't hear anybody <coughs> getting them last year so um yeah, yeah you he, get that type of deer you'd probably definitely hear if someone <laughs> yeah got him down yeah so yeah i can't be pretty excited i do got one cell cam up in there but i haven't we i haven't i've been picking up i think this has been about 10 days out I haven't picked up anything cell cam but um i know the bucks will start migrating in that area probably there's a couple big bean fields and you know the next month or so so nice all right man yep. well i i appreciate you telling the story of the one that got away definitely a heartbreaking buck to to not close the chapter on but man you gave it your best and uh sounds like you hunted him when you could in the best opportunities and sound like you were close 
on multiple occasions. Yeah. So there's not much more you can do on that and two years of sheds and for him to just ghost you, you know, you need that, that one more year and you could have maybe put the pieces together. So, yeah, yeah. I've had a few big ones like that disappear. Um, yeah, there's some, yeah, there was another couple big ones. I that one I was to our in the following year, them one eighties that, there was one there. He was just giant. Yeah, but there was two of them. I was hunting. They both disappeared the following year. I, you know, some bucks I've I've patterned bucks for six, seven years on public land down here. I got history of um. I got sheds off one. I think three years old, four years old, five. I think six, and then I had pictures of him when he was seven. And then I kind of quit hunting down in that area. Just it, We kept losing access to it. It was hard to access. I had permission to go through some private and just everything. They were shutting down, and I lost kind of access into that area. And, um, yeah, but it's pretty amazing, you know, some of the, you know, everybody thinks public land, you know, everything gets shot up. But, I mean, it, it, there's always good ones in Iowa. But still, you know, to <clears throat> get a buck at that age and just have, history with them every year it's kind of pretty amazing but um, yeah we got one that we think's seven or eight for sure keeps mm-hmm. going downhill keeps getting smaller was just the yeah. widest biggest framed eight pointer the the second year we were on him and then the, the next year he was decent nine pointer and then last year <laughs> he was like a junk his g2 was like two <laughs> inches and still heavy mass one side's good the other side's really starting to fall apart yeah so it'll be interesting to see we think we got him figured out now just it takes us like three or four years on these deer to get a a sight picture of running cams and <laughs> encounters and stuff to kind Boy. of figure him out <laughs> so yeah that's for sure yep. all, right. all right scott well, we won't take up all your night man we appreciate you coming on yeah, nice talking to you guys, and um, good luck this season. All right, guys. Well, don't get much better than that. A stone cold white tail killer who always gets it done, telling you the time that he didn't get it done. <laughs> With the hunting public, those guys are always out there getting it done, yeah. hunting the same buck, um, encountering the deer. They're all close in the game. They're both scooping sheds. Um, really good story. Kind of some ups and downs with the tr- the guy out there on the four wheeler and baiting. And yeah, when when he was talking about all that and hunting with them, uh, the hunting public guys, man, I just, I just envisioned like a little secluded pocket of timber, and yeah. like they were both just like closing in yeah, on just it, closing in on I was that like, man, deer. This, and this, this deer didn't have a chance. And just like you know, just like all those other deer, you wonder how they survive, and then they just ghost him, and uh, you know the. The meaning of this whole series is to say, you know, the best, the best in the world at killing whitetail, still get beat sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, so like we always say, if you're brand new, just get into hunting, or if you're a seasoned vet and you like like us last year, just get your ass literally handed to you. These guys get their butt kicked every now and again too. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the one that got away. We love you guys. We hope you guys are enjoying this series. We're gonna keep them coming. And uh, you guys are going to be blown away by the guests that we're going to be bringing. Um, Like always, try to do the right thing. Try to leave leave a legacy and try not to let the one get away this year.